G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. My name's Justin. Well, this week I have a really large monstrous piece and it is beautiful color on the top. But we have issues. We have no issues with that beautiful color, but what we do have is a very, very thick stone. And in this thick stone, there is two more color bars underneath. And those two more color bars look really, really nice and bright. And uh, I need to have a look at those. Curiosity is killing me. So I need to have a look at these two color bars, or at least one of them for now, and see how it faces. Now remember um, a couple weeks ago where I cut an opal and it went from blue green and when we faced it, it turned orange. Well, this one is showing nice color and it's showing green, yellow, orange from the side. But I believe that once I face this, it will only show green, blue. So it's doing the opposite effect, I believe, than the last stain that I cut. Now this is, um, this is also knobby opal, it comes from Alloa Field in Lightning Ridge and it's quite a large knobby, it's been rubbed already. But the people couldn't decide what to do with that second bar so they just left it. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to first have a look and see what that colour looks like and then we'll take the next step. And the next step you may like, you may not, but um, I think it's the safest way for me to do it um, without wasting nice colour. So let's get on the wheel and we'll have a crack. We don't want to crack. We don't want it to crack. We want it to be good. Uh, I'm just going to go on the wheel. Let's get a close up bird's eye view of this piece. And so you can see the magnificent colour on the top, but these two colour bars below are what I'm very interested in looking at because it's a waste not to be able to see them and um, while we got that color there and I could make a nice beautiful oval if I wanted to we have to we have to see what that looks like so I'm gonna grind all that off on the wheel in a minute and um, we're gonna see what kind of color is exposed but there is a green and yellow tinge to it from the side. I don't believe that that will turn um, or yellow or orange on the top. I think from like last week where the stone went from green to orange, I think this will go from orange to green, in my opinion. But anyway, let's give it a go and see what we can get going on the wheel. <laughs> readjust that camera there we go Can you see that color really starting to show up quite easily which is great it's not taking much to uncover that bar So the ultimate thing for this stone would be is if, if that potch or some of the potch turned black but it doesn't seem to be turning black so it's going to be more a dark opal than a, than a black opal. Whoa, look at that colour coming through actually facing really nice but as I said I thought there's some nice yellow and orange from the side but I think we've all got just green and blue from the top and you can 
can see that potch is now starting to get really thin down to that colour bar. And the colour is starting to show through. So this is where I've got to be careful and only take off the potch and not lose any colour. So that's really nice flagstone pattern there on the back of that. So, this is going to be a hard one to decide. That's just uncovered some really nice flagstone green pattern, green and blue pattern. And while it is nice colour, I believe that that stone's probably a bit too thick. And um, I would love to slice this like right through the middle. I reckon it would be worthwhile having a go at slicing it. I don't think it's quite thick enough to be able to slice it properly so I think I'm risking too much I was thinking of taking a really big risk and slicing right through the middle but I just don't think it's a smart idea but what I'm gonna do um, I think we need to do a bit of a test so because it's uh, a funny shape or an odd shape and I love ovals so please don't berate me on wanting to make it an oval I might slice a little bit off the edge where that point comes out I'm going to slice that off and then I've got an oval right there and we can test that triangle so I want to take that down to its second bar on the triangle and see what that color and pattern looks like because if it's the same as the the bar above um, I'm happy to take that down to make it a more of a nicer even um, thickness of a stone so it's a much more pleasing to be able to set in a piece of jewelry um, and it won't look so thick so uh, I'm gonna try that so let's uh, I'm gonna do some little drawing on it and make a template and then we're gonna slice that little bit off so let's get to that So the whole reasoning for me to slice that little corner off was not so much to make it an oval but actually to test out this back. So what I want to do is while this is nice colour, that stone is too thick to be um, one gem. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this, this bar off and I'm going to go for that second bar. And that second bar will give me a really good, good indication of whether it's worthwhile me taking or pretty much foregoing all of that color for that next bar. So we get a more pleasing thickness, double-sided beautiful gem. So um, it's going to be risky, but this piece is going to be a good telltale to whether um, it's worthwhile doing or not. So let's start on this piece first. Maybe it will be good, maybe it won't face as well. And it can happen that two bars that look the same and one doesn't face as well as the other. 
So there we go. That's not a bad looking bar either. But the question is, is it as good as that bar? On reflection of looking at this stone, the second bar does not seem as strong and it's a little bit more directional. So I'm going to now shape them to a nice pleasing shape so we can cut them. Before I consider the really nice colour on the back, my main consideration is the colour on the front. It's the best colour and the most valuable. So I'm going to concentrate on that first and then I'll work on the green blue on the back. That's magnificent as it is. What do you think? You can see as I work this stone, you can see that top colour bar. It's only about a millimetre and a half thick, but I need to get a nice cabochon. So I'm going to take that colour bar right down as far as I can while the colour is still there to the potch so I can get a nice dome. It just goes to show, sometimes you need to test a stone, but test it in a very smart way so you don't lose lots of colour. If I had tried to test this stone by just grinding the back off to the second bar, I probably won't have the same gem as I have right now. So it's always good to figure out a way to test and measure. It can save you a lot of money. Finding that um, this top colour bar is actually quite thin, but the further I go down, the better the pattern's getting. And um, so it's now a balancing act of me trying to get a cabochon or a dome on the top without losing the colour because the potch is only less than a millimetre away. Um, but I still want to get a nice dome and edge on it. So that is my challenge to keep that beautiful colour without getting potch in the face. People often ask me, why don't you use a Dremel? Why don't you sandblast the opal? Why don't you use a solution to get rid of the sand? Well, my answer to that is over the years of dealing with opal and the time with my father to selling opal on my own, I've learned that the shape being more symmetrical is more likely to appeal to a customer and jeweler alike. Some of you might disagree with me, like my good friend Justine in Lightning Ridge, which would have been my name had I not been a man. Justin lives in Lightning Ridge and she loves a freeform carving. You can ask her yourself if you ever go there. 
She owns a shop on the main street and is one of the most down-to-earth humans I know. But my preference is a symmetrical shape. It appeals to more people and that's the way my father and I have done it for years. But hey, I cut a triangle in this video so I can be swayed to the dark side. But all jokes aside, I will cut a carving if it's really warranted. But if I see an oval or a round or a cushion cut sitting in there, I'm going to go for it. just finished polishing this piece um, beautiful beautiful color loving the color it's really pretty and the pattern came better the further I went down now, I didn't want to go too far because the bars not that thick but it has made a lot more flagstone pattern come out rather than the, the moss pattern that was over the top so uh, pretty pretty happy about that so while this is 25 carats and I think the color on top is worth 1200 a carat you can't really times the carat weight by the price per carat you following me because it's too thick um, I think we have to go more off a piece price what the piece is probably worth so take away the 25 carats take away let's take away 10 carats and say it's 15 carats so 15 times 1200 a carat so there you go around about an eighteen thousand dollar gem um, is that piece the smaller piece weighs a smaller piece way so just under three carats just under 2.97 um, that's a that's a around about a fifteen fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar gem as well so it's not bad, not bad. It still was worth cutting that edge off just to see whether that color on the back was worthwhile going to. Um, and especially that second bar, that second bar just was not as strong as the first bar. So taking the risk of losing the color on the back of that stone to go to the next bar to make the whole oval, the whole, whole opal, sorry, um, look a little bit more pleasing in its size uh, is not worth it because we don't want to risk that color on the back for lesser color on the back just because of its thickness because it can still be set beautifully in a piece of jewelry in a beautiful pendant so very nice piece i'm happy with it and um 18 000, so twenty thousand dollars including the smaller piece that's not a bad day's work well, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe that snuck up so quick. We've got to 100,000 subscribers, and I want to thank you so much for showing the love. It's been overwhelming how awesome you guys have been for us. And Melinda and I have been working really hard to get you great videos out there, and... We just can't believe we set our goal for 100,000 and we are there. So I think that deserves a dance. And Ruth couldn't be here as she's away for a couple of days, but we did set her up on a Zoom call so you can listen in. So check this out. <laughs>